Hi, my name is Mark Sinovich. I'm CTO of Microsoft Azure. I'm also a co-creator of the SysInternals tools, and I continue to develop the SysInternals tools. This week, we published an update to three of the SysInternals tools, and I thought I'd start having video updates to describe what the recent changes are in updates. In this week's release, the first tool we updated was Core Info. Core Info is a tool that lets you see information about the CPUs on your systems, the caches, and what kind of memory is on those systems, including looking at things like the latency of NUMA memory accesses. Core Info also shows you information about the capabilities of a processor, and this week's update now adds the ability to see if an Intel processor supports unrestricted guest mode in its virtualization features. The second tool we updated was LiveKD. Recent builds of Windows 10 caused incompatibilities with LiveKD's ability to enumerate virtual machine partitions and to dump them. LiveKD's power comes from being able to dump a live system or a live virtual machine, and this week's update now makes it compatible with the recent versions of Windows 10. The final update is the biggest one and the one that made the front page, and that is an update to Sysmon. Sysmon is a tool that I created back in 2014 to help incident responders track the movement of attackers around their systems. So while it has monitor in its name, it is not a general purpose monitoring tool, but rather one focused on the events that are specific to what an attacker might be doing. In addition to logging process create and process deletes, for example, it also is able to look and track uh, remote thread injection, something an attacker tool might do to inject thread uh, code into another process. It also tracks name pipe activity, network activity, and WMI activity. So it will also be useful for seeing how an attacker is creating pers persistent presence in registry creation or in WMI registrations. The big update in this release of Sysmon, in addition to a, a flag that lets you disable DNS reverse lookup in cases where DNS servers might be overwhelmed with uh, Sysmon looking at up IP address to DNS mappings for network activity, is the addition of a new event, one aimed at tracking file deletions. Now, why are file deletions interesting? Well, what we found was that when we were tracking attackers in Microsoft's own systems, we saw the attackers would uh, get onto a machine, drop a bunch of tools as part of a toolkit for looking at information on the system, for look, looking at performing lateral movement, and then when they were done, delete the tools. So we'd see sometimes evidence of an attacker on a machine, but wouldn't know exactly what they were doing because we didn't have access to those tools. And having access to those tools would do two things. One, we'd be able to have better understand what they were doing, what capabilities they had. And second, we could write signatures to prevent those tools from operating or signatures that would let us detect when those tools became active on other machines to signal evidence of the attacker being active. So Sysmon's file delete capability is able to track file deletes, but not only that, it is able to capture tools that might be deleted at the time they're deleted. And that way they get preserved into an archive that the incident responders then can go look at those tools. So why don't we see Sysmon's file delete in action? So here I've got a system. Uh, it's Windows 10 system, and I've got a sample Sysmon configuration file here. Now, just for those of you not familiar with Sysmon configuration files, here at the top we've got configuration settings, and I've got a few settings enabled or in this configuration. One of them is that when we capture hashes of files, we're going to capture the MD5 and imp hashes. So on process uh, image load events, for example, or driver load, these are the hashes that would be collected as part of those events. I've also got the DNS lookup here that I mentioned flag and set to false to stop reverse DNS lookups in networking entries. And then I've got this new configuration enter here, archive directory, which I set to archive. This is a single name entry you're going to specify that Sysmon then is going to create directories at the root of each volume into which it will copy files that it's being archived at the time of deletion. So no need to specify a path. In fact, it's just one name segment that's just gonna be there at the top of the root directories. Then I've got my event filtering rules here. 
and you'll see that I've got event filtering rules for every event. Uh, interesting thing about the way that I configured them is most of them have this on match equals include. There's a few ways you can do this, but what this does is make it so that none of the events from that category are going to be captured by Sysmon because the filter here is saying of uh, any of the conditions in the body of this configuration are valid, then capture, trigger, but on match include with no conditions means that no, there's no and no conditions that can be matched and that means in by definition no events will be captured so it's another way of saying exclude everything the only exception i've got here is process create which i've got an on match exclude which says basically capture everything and then i've got file delete here i've got an on match include so here i do have a condition that condition is target file and there's a few fields that are going to come out of a file delete event. One of them is the file that's being deleted. And this is typically what you'd go create a, a filter on because capturing all deleted files is obviously not very productive. You're going to catch a lot of just temporary files being generated on a system. So usually after you've understand where an attacker is dropping tools or what type of tools or some hint about the names, you would go set a filter here to capture their tools at the time they delete them. Just for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to capture any files that are deleted out of the C demo directory. So to see that in action, let's go and install that configuration file with the dash I switch. Now that rule is active. And let me go create a file, hello, into test.txt. And now let's just go delete that file. Go take a look at the event viewer to see what Sysmon shows for that. And I've got a custom view for Sysmon events here. I'll just click on it and you can see there's a file delete. And if I zoom in there, you can see that sure enough, there's a file delete. You can see that the user Abby did delete, command.exe was the process responsible for delete and test.txt deleted it. As I mentioned, I've got a configuration set to capture MD5 and impashes. So the file that was deleted is going to be uh, hashed there. Uh, same thing like everything else. And we're going to also capture that file and use its SHA-2 hash as its name, and which you'll see in a second. You can also see whether is executable shows that it's a PE file or not. So this would be a DLL or an exe. And then finally, archive true means that it was saved to the archive directory. There's a few reasons why a file might not be archived. One of them is the archive directory has it. There's not enough free space on the system. And so Sysmon backs off the saving. Another one is uh, potentially an error that prevented it. Another one is that the file is just simply not interesting. And you'll see that in a few minutes. So let's go take a look at that file in the archive directory. Now the archive directory, you can see it, but access is denied even though I'm here as an administrator. And that's because it is ACLed such that only the system account can get into it. Now there's a few ways to get access to that directory. One of them is to write a custom tool and run it as a service to extract the files from there. Another one is to get into it with the psexec command, another sysinternals tool. The SID switches here say run a system run interactively and disconnect the pipes from the input and output streams of the target uh, process and that will then just basically just launch us a new command.exe but this new command.exe will be running as NT authority system and now I can get into that archive directory and take a look and you can see there I've got actually this is left over from a previous run but I've got uh, test.txt there. So let's type that 6d and then you can see hello. So let's go ahead and clean that up and come back here. Now the next thing I wanted to show you is the ability for Sysmon to capture files that are shredded. Uh, I mentioned earlier that an attacker will delete their tools after they're uh, at the time they're leaving a system but Many times they will do what's called shred the file, which is to overwrite it with zeros or some other pattern and then delete it. And that makes it harder for 
forensic imaging tools, for example, to capture and retrieve the file contents. So Sysmon has built into it detections for shredding activity and will capture a file that it sees being shredded before it's actually deleted or shredded. So let's go take a look at that in action. So what I'm going to do is first copy Notepad to the demo directory. And I've written a tool called Overwrite that is very similar to Attacker's Tools. It'll simply take a file and overwrite it with a sequence of bytes. I'm going to run it without any optional command line argument, which will let it overwrite the file with zeros. So I'm going to overwrite Notepad. Oh, actually, before we do that, let's just take a look and make sure that this is really Notepad and you can see that it is. It's a signed file from Microsoft. It is Notepad. Now let's go ahead and overwrite it. And let's take a look again. And you can see that it's lost all its information because it's been completely overwritten by zeros. Did Sysmon capture the file for us? Well, if we go do an F5 in Event Viewer to look, sure enough, it looks like we caught that file. We see that overwrite.exe had a file delete operation on target file name. In this case, it really wasn't a file delete. It was an overwrite, which Sysmon considers the same. And it did archive it. Here's the hash of that file. So we're going to find the MD5 hash uh, of that file here and the mpash like we configured. And let's go take a look in the archive directory. And sure enough, there it is with this SHA2 hash as its name. Let's copy that out into the demo directory and verify that that is really the, sys, the copy of Notepad that we deleted. And sure enough, there it is. Now, I mentioned before that sometimes archive could be false. And one of the reasons would be there's not enough disk space. Another reason could be that a file has been overwritten before Sysmon's heuristics trigger and are able to capture the file in which case it will actually tell you that that's the case. Let's go to the temp directory and make a copy of MS Paint this time. And I'm going to overwrite MS Paint this time with, let's uh, overwrite it with FF. And then let's copy that overwritten file to the demo directory so that Sysmon will pick it up when we delete it. And let's go take in a look in Event Viewer at what just happened. And you can see there's a file delete. When we take a look at it, if we see down here, archived is false. And the reason is shredded file with pattern FF. So while we didn't capture the tool, at least we see that there is overwrite activity going on, uh, shredding activity, and that the attacker is trying to cover their tracks. So that brings me to the conclusion of this quick overview of the SysInternals tools update this time. Again, we had core info, live KD, and a major update to Sysmon. If you like this, please follow me on Twitter, Mark Rusinovich, and let us know in the SysInternals forum, or you can drop me a note always with feedback, suggestions on tools at markrus at microsoft.com. Thanks a lot. I'll see you next time.